Hey boys and girls, Jester here. Welcome back to the court. Now of course everyone knows, or everyone who is watching this video probably knows, the San Diego Comic Con is going on this week, or has been going on for the past few days at the very least. And because of that, and we all know how big of a nerd I am, I want to talk about some of the things that have been revealed and some of the things that have been shown and all this kind of stuff. Now obviously there's so much going on there, I can't talk about all of it, so I'm just going to pick out a few things that I really, really want to talk about. And as many of you could probably guess, it's going to involve a lot of comic book stuff. <laughs> because, well, I'm a massive Marvel fan and there's a lot of Marvel news going on. And to begin with, obviously, we're going to talk about Tom Hiddleston's appearance as Loki to open up the Marvel panel. I saw the video that Screen Team put up on their channel of Tom Hiddleston playing Loki as he introduced Thor The Dark World, or the clip thereof anyway. Uh, and my god, that guy is fantastic. Now as you might expect, that clip opened with a massive action scene of Thor destroying a monster reducing him to rubble with his hammer, of course, you know, that's what you'd expect. I mean, no one said the Thor films weren't going to be action-packed. I thought it was fucking funny at the same time. People disagree with me. So I'm hoping that Thor The Dark World really comes back doing the same thing, you know, it's not just going to relegate itself to just an action film because that's what people thought it was going to be. The first one, you know, I'm hoping they stay on track and they make it funny as well still. And of course, with a cast like Natalie Portman, Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston, how could you not? And also on the Marvel panel, they revealed a clip for Captain America Winter Soldier as well. But obviously, this is going to be a fantastic film. No one's denying that. There's no possible way that the Captain America sequel could not be a great film because it's not just a superhero film. That's what made Captain America so good in the first place. He's not your typical superhero, he's something completely different. Well, maybe not completely different, but he's something very different. And the Winter Soldier, the arc that the Winter Soldier follows, is very much a shield-oriented story. So we're going to be getting even more of the not-quite-superhero action going on. Now, the clip for that film also opened with a massive action scene, a fight in a glass elevator with a bunch of, you know, you know bad guys, obviously. So there's Marvel keeping up with the action we expect from them, that's a good thing, it's a good thing, lots of energy, lots of action, lots of craziness. But, they broke the trend when they showed the Guardians of the Galaxy clip. And when I say broke the trend, I mean in a good way. Now, there's a lot of naysayers out there who are kind of being all like, who the hell are the Guardians of the Galaxy, what is this, why is this happening, why is there a talking raccoon, a talking tree, and just so on and so forth. I'd say that's probably a very, very evident of around my area because ugh, it's, there's not very many big comic fans where I'm, where I'm from. It's a cultural thing and it's not really hit my area as heavily as it does in America obviously it's very close to home in America. And of course England has their massive comic following, there's a comic con going on in this area right now even, but there's nowhere near the sheer numbers of fans as there are in America so obviously over here there's a very different kind of level of you know, acceptance of this kind of thing. Now it may be that I'm doing my country a disservice, but I'm just talking about my particular area at least. But back to the point I was trying to make. Guardians of the Galaxy looks amazing. I am so excited for this film. We have had a bunch more cast members revealed. I think it was yesterday, it was the panel itself. As of me recording this anyway. We have a story kind of revealed for the most part anyway. Especially when you consider that Jimon Honsu accidentally let it slip that Thanos definitely is involved in some way. Now this isn't really much of a slip up or a reveal or a surprise or anything. We all already knew he was going to be involved. How could he not be? Especially given the fact of the Avengers films title reveal. Which I'll get to in a bit. <laughs> but we have further confirmed cast for the Guardians of the Galaxy film. We have Chris Pratt playing Star-Lord fantastic casting if you ask me, he's just the right amount of funny and recently come to the forefront with a bit of action kind of stuff. Zoe Saldana as Gamora, that's a really good casting, which obviously she's very used to having the practical makeup and then the CGI to, to become blue in Avatar, so doing, I imagine they're probably doing very much the same thing to make her green. Dave Bautista as Drax the Destroyer, which I was surprised about, but I'm actually 
very much warming up to. I've got no problems with Dave Bautista, it's just it was a surprise, that's all. And like I said a moment ago, we've got Jumon Honsu playing Korra. Now we still unfortunately don't have a reveal for the voices of Rocket Raccoon and Groot, which, ah, man, I just want them to do it, please, finally. Now obviously there's been a lot of chatter about uh, Vin Diesel, uh, and the prevailing theory is that he is going to be doing voice talent. The majority of people I've talked to or I've listened to or I've read seems to think he's going to do uh, Rocket Raccoon. I disagree. Not to say that he won't do a good Rocket Raccoon, but I'm, I've, I've never heard Vin Diesel try to pull off an English accent. And I always, you know, Rocket Raccoon has to have that sort of, has to have, well, has to ha he has to have an English accent. He's a space pirate. But knowing Vin Diesel's voice is a very, very unique voice, very, um, I think it's very much on the head for where I'm going with this, but he's got a very rooty voice, if that makes sense. He is going to be Groot, that's my, that's my prediction, he is going to voice Groot, if anybody. And obviously we also have a slew of other cast members playing other characters as well, namely Karen Gillan came out of nowhere of uh, Doctor Who fame playing Nebula. Now that's a bad guy, I'm interested to see how she pulls this off, because the only thing I've ever seen in her is Doctor Who, and, well, I guess we'll see. And of course, the ever popular Michael Rucker, <laughs> playing Yondu, I'm really looking forward to that, I really, really, really am looking forward to that. And now back to that little teaser that said a few minutes ago, uh, Jumon Honsu let slip about how uh, his character is working with Thanos in this film, the Guardians of the Galaxy film, and uh, I will be, honestly, when... I don't think that has any kind of surprise for anybody, is it? But especially so as Joss Whedon himself was there at the panel and he revealed the title for the new Avengers film, Avengers Age of Ultron. Very interesting choice given that the comic series has only really just started, kind of. <laughs> but then Ultron has always existed as a character and there's probably a million different arcs that could just as easily have been called Age of Ultron or could be called Age of Ultron. So if Ultron's going to be the bad guy in the new Avengers film, there's no room for Thanos, in my opinion, so it makes sense. They're probably saving him for the third film. You know, big, big bad. And aren't we all so very glad that Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr., who is Iron Man, he is Tony Stark, is still in the books for at least a little while longer. And with the involvement of Ultron, we are definitely having a Hank Pym, I'd say, which definitely means Edgar Wright's Ant-Man is definitely on the books, I'm saying definitely too many times, and it's not like we didn't already know, <laughs> but I'm very much looking forward to that, and I'm still really, really, really hoping that Nathan Fillion gets the position as Ant-Man. I just think he would be perfect. And now to round off our Marvel section, which is pretty much going to be 80% of this video, we have the panel for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now if this does not become a smash hit, I will be very surprised and very disappointed and probably not really that surprised because, you know, mm. there may be a million comic book fans out there but the majority of the audience probably will not quite get the deep the intricacies of it. They'll just know it's a spin-off from Avengers and know that vaguely there's comics and all this kind of thing. You know what I mean. But despite all that, we already know that uh, obviously Coulson is coming back, thank God. And he's not coming back as we've all suspected, or at least it's been hinted at that he's not. He's not coming back as the Vision. There's not been much talk of him being a life model decoy or anything like that. It's basically just a case of where he fakes his death. And it's surprising why nobody thought this could be the case. S.H.I.E.L.D. being an espionage group, of course, that why were we just automatically assuming that they'd do something crazy when they could just do what the real ones actually do, just fake his death. It kind of seems silly that nobody thought of that now, but then probably somebody did, but it was just too boring to make it through all the other theories that were out on the internet. Now this show looks set to be in amazing, uh, because obviously Joss Whedon's at the helm again, and we, I loved his series of uh, Buffy and Angel, all that good, Firefly, obviously the because Joss Whedon is amazing at doing character-driven, group character-driven stories. He can bring a group of people together and make them into something that we want to watch because it's so unique. Everyone's got their position, you know, it's not like some characters fade off into the background. Everyone has their reason to be there. Everyone's funny in their own way. Everyone's important in their own way. All that good stuff. And the premise is just so good. 
shield going out there trying to find all these superpower people before somebody else does and makes them bad then you're also kind of thinking shields government there's still a chance they could be turning people bad you know mutant registration act and all that kind of thing oh there's so many possibilities but it does look set to be absolutely amazing if abc do not have a hit here i will be very surprised and now transitioning on the back of joss whedon that would be something very very fun that would be a story to tell i just want to make special mention of the firefly mmo that has been announced it, it is not quite what firefly and trinity fans wanted but it's something it's definitely enough to tide us all over until they really get on the job and make something real. So at least it's still a piece of the Firefly universe. So I'm looking forward to that, but I'll probably have to upgrade my phone or something or get a tablet to be able to play it out and about. Because this piece of shit is not going to be able to pull it off. And now to round off today's video, uh, we're going to talk about something completely unrelated to Josh Whedon, Marvel, Firefly or anything like that. Or anything similar really, it's something bloody unique but looks pretty good. Now, I'm a big Metallica fan. Two weeks ago we were talking about that Robin Thicke song and I was telling you how it's not usually my style of music. I'm telling you Metallica is a lot closer to my style of music. I've been a big fan of theirs for a long time. I first heard their stuff through a friend in school and ever since it's just that's it. That was it. That was a fact. And revealed at Comic Con that they've made a, uh, a concert movie slash feature film kind of thing. Now I went into reading this story not having a fucking clue what that meant, but I watched the trailer starring Dane DeHaan of Chronicle fame. Oh, slight uh, link to Marvel there actually because he's in Amazing Spider-Man 2 as well. Sorry. And the film looks bloody interesting, it really does. I don't know what I'm expecting of it, I don't know what it is or how it's going to work. Well actually I have some ideas and hopefully they're the ones that are right because they seem pretty cool to me. But it's basically a concert movie where Dane DeHaan's character is one of the, uh, the the backstage team and he has to go fetch something that's been lost or gone missing or something. I mean, the trailer's a bit weird. It's like, well, if this van is out there sitting with important equipment, why is it sat fuelless in a parking garage? But it all kicks off because he's on his way back with his van, gets hit by another car, and then the whole world's in some sort of weird... Mad Max doomsday style apocalypse situation. It was like riots and chaos and people in gas masks and yeah, crazy. But it looked amazing. I, I can sit through that film listening to Metallica, watching all that craziness going on because I love those kinds of films and I will be a very, very happy boy. So yeah, so I'm interested to see what ends up coming out of that. And this brings us to the end of the video and before we actually stop the question of the week, Obviously I'm not very good at these questions and we've already established that. <laughs> but I'm uniquely geared to have a good one this week. This is easy, this is like shooting fish in a barrel. What is your favourite story from Comic Con this year, boys and girls? San Diego Comic Con is still going on. There's been some amazing stories already. What is your favourite thing that has been revealed? There's so much to choose from and I want to know what you guys are really, really interested in. So please let me know what that is and put it in the comments in any format you want and thanks for watching guys uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more and I will see you through the week